When food goes off or becomes rancid, this is due to a complicated series of reactions, which are mainly types of oxidation. The food industry slows down these reactions so that their products last as long as possible. Many of these foods contain oils, and it is the oxidation of these particular products that we'll be looking at today. There are several ways companies try to keep their oil-containing products in good condition. As an oxidation reaction, if you remove oxygen, the process will be slowed down. So crisp packets, for instance, are filled with nitrogen rather than oxygen-containing air. The two most important environmental factors that determine how quickly oils go off are the temperature they are stored at and the amount of light. That is what the first experiment is going to investigate. We are using lard in this experiment. Along with many other commercial fats and oils, it contains antioxidants to increase its shelf life. If you want the reaction to proceed faster, you can use fat which can be collected from cooking bacon, sausages or even oily fish. To visualise the process, we mix beta-carotene in with the fat. Beta-carotene is a terpene, a highly unsaturated compound that behaves similarly to fats. Beta-carotene is orange, it gives carrots their colour, and when it's oxidised, it goes colourless. Now to the experiment. Take a small disc of filter paper and dip it into the fat. Take it out, then place it in a Petri dish. Repeat this until you have four discs in four Petri dishes. First, we look at temperature and light. Dish A and dish B are kept at room temperature. A in the dark and B in bright light, ideally on a windowsill. Dish C is placed in the fridge and dish D in an incubator set at around 40 degrees centigrade. Both of these will also be in the dark once the doors are closed. Leave these where they are for four to five days. The second experiment will look at the effect of chemicals on this process. As before, prepare some discs of beta-carotene coloured fat and place them in Petri dishes. This time, treat the dishes as follows. One, just with water, which is our control. Two, with a sea salt solution. Three, with a commercial antioxidant in this case, BHA. Now place all of them in an incubator at around 40 degrees. Leave them for four to five days. Now, let's look at the first experiment. You can clearly see that the dish left in the light has no colour left at all. Of the others, the colder the temperature, the more of the original colour that is left. So the message here seems to be, keep your fats and oils cool and in the dark. Going on to the second experiment, you can see that compared with the water control, the others have faded less due to their antioxidant activity. I am Kevin Block. I'm the new product development project manager for Boxer's Food Group based out in Fochabers. Oxidative rancidity, from a Boxer's point of view, is probably most applicable to what, when we do the pastry. Because of the the fat content that we're putting into the pastry and we're layering it, we'll leave it to rest for a short period of time, just a number of hours, but then we'll have to use it within 24 hours and our guidelines, the maximum time, even though it's chilled storage. The oxidative rancidity will actually, it'll basically make everything taste off and it'll turn the pastry. So you're getting that kind of sourness, I think is maybe the easiest way to describe it. Controlling the process. If you understand the process, you can control the process. And that's the critical part, is that understanding. We've got an on-site, quite an extensive laboratory on site, and we've got a, a large quality control and quality assurance department. So we need to understand how the reaction occurs, if you like, or what drives it and what makes it happen, so you can actually avoid it. So if, keeping things at a lower temperature, that helps. Keeping it in a room with very little light, that helps. So it's, if you understand what causes it, you can then ensure that you do as much as possible, as simply and as cheaply as possible, to avoid it. We need good food technologists, scientists, everybody that can come together and create good quality food products. We need them. And without the skill, without that skill base behind it, we will suffer. We are suffering at the moment. We already are short of food technologists, food scientists. If you want a career in the food industry, just go for it. Just go and do it. It is so satisfying. You get to, you get to meet fascinating people. You get to eat some phenomenal products. And you get to go to some really interesting places as well. When you see somebody going into a supermarket and picking up your product that you've made, 
and you've helped me through that whole thing of taking it from somebody's idea and somebody's concept through to a safe, nutritional, good product on the shelf. Working with food's great. It's absolutely magic. And yeah, I couldn't recommend it more. And that's coming from an engineer.